Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I got an A star in A level further maths so that you can do the exact same. If you're new to the channel, hey my name's Ali, I'm studying computer science at King's College London and if you're going into year 12 or year 13 this year and you're sitting your A level further maths mock or the actual exam then you've come to the right place. A lot of you have been asking for this video in the comments of my recent videos so let's get right into it three simple tips. Okay, so tip number one is to take advantage of the fact that the questions are really, really repetitive. This is the key takeaway I've had from taking A-level further maths, and that is that the content is very difficult, obviously. People consider further maths among subjects like physics and chemistry to be some of the most difficult ones out there. And exam boards know this, so they know a lot of people are gonna struggle on the questions, so they naturally have to make the questions a lot easier. Well, not necessarily easier, but they do definitely have less free will to get really creative with the types of questions that they're putting in the papers. A-level maths is a different story because with that the content isn't as difficult obviously so a lot of people are doing better on the exams so the examiners have to get a little bit creative with the questions and give some harder ones particularly towards the end. That's the aspect that makes regular A-level maths really difficult. But with further maths, the actual content is the difficult part. But if you learn it and get really used to the questions that they're giving in the past papers, then you'll be completely fine. Speaking of past papers, I literally say this in every single study video I make on this channel at this point, but I cannot overstate this enough that you have to be doing every single past paper out there. There are always more past papers that you could be doing and every new thing you learn, especially in a subject like maths, or further maths is gonna be spectacularly useless if you're not consistently putting it into practice. But yeah, main point is, questions can be really repetitive, particularly more than other subjects, for example. So take advantage of this, learn the types of questions they give, and you'll be more than fine. This couldn't be truer in stats in specific, because in a lot of cases and question types, it's literally just using the same methods, but with different numbers. Like hypothesis testing is a really good example of this. Examiners are gonna dress up the questions in these crazy random contexts that are really wordy just to throw you off, but all you have to do is scan through, learn what the context is about, and pick out the numbers that you actually have to use. And then you just carry out the exact same hypothesis test that you've done in 10 other past papers. All right, tip number two is really crucial, and it's to make sure that you've mastered the core A-level maths content before moving on to further maths. If you think you can just skip some of the A-level maths content and just instantly dive into further maths, you're cooked. The point with further maths is that while there are some concepts and topics that are completely new and you won't have seen anything like them before, you're still very often gonna need a very, very solid foundation in A-level maths. Because as soon as they ask a vectors question with matrices transformations, and your geometry knowledge for single maths isn't good enough to understand the basics of what's going on, then you're not gonna know how to answer that question. Like especially the core topics in specific, just like geometry, make sure you've really got those on lock or else further maths is just gonna become that much harder. This is why your teachers will try and arrange the structure of your learning of A-level maths and further maths in a way that you're not just learning a completely new topic that's really difficult without any of the precursor knowledge. The only reason I felt like I was able to learn the stuff from further maths well and quickly be able to progress onto the more difficult questions was because my knowledge of A-level maths was really solid. I had done so many questions for regular A-level maths to the point where anytime I needed to use a method from that syllabus, I didn't even need to think about it. In the big mark questions, this is gonna happen really often because they know you're a clever student, you're taking further maths, and they're not gonna waste a question asking something from single maths. Just know that those methods are gonna definitely be used in further maths and they need to be second nature to you. This is also gonna be really nice for when you're sitting your A-level maths papers because you will have built up all that knowledge to make the further maths papers easier. And that means by the time the exam season rolls around, and you're really good at single maths, you don't need to spend nearly as much time studying that. You can focus on your other tricky subjects that you haven't spent as much time on. My teacher told our class this when I was about to sit my A-levels, and it's completely true. If you can't get an A-star in single maths, you can't expect to be able to get an A-star in further maths. Again, the only way you're gonna have built up that A-level maths knowledge is by solving a huge number of practice questions so that you're familiar with every single method that could show up in A-level further maths. So take the time and really make sure you've got that A-level maths content on lock. Now my third and final tip is to make sure that you know that you really do have time and it's okay if you find something really tricky when you learn it for the first time in further maths. I have a really vivid memory of learning differential equations for the first time in further maths and being completely confused and thinking that everyone else in the class around me knew exactly what was going on and that I was the only one. Like I had never been this confused after learning something in my entire life. 
I didn't understand the methods we were using. I didn't understand why we were using them, but I just took some of my own time to look over the content alone from the beginning and answer some practice questions. And I also realized that many other people in the class were struggling with this topic just like I was. I tried to really carefully analyze how the worked examples were answering the questions because the questions that followed were really similar to the ones that were being answered in the worked examples. And that almost comes back to the first tip, which is about how repetitive the questions in further maths can be. I had learned a very tricky topic, differential equations, and the examiners know that this is a hard topic that many people won't have seen before. So they have to account for that by making the questions far more basic to scale the grades more like the other subjects so that an A star doesn't end up becoming 40% for the grade boundary. Just don't stress about it. Everyone is gonna be finding this subject really tricky. You just have to take the time to understand the worked examples and solve loads of practice questions. At times, I really do recommend the strategy of just diving straight into practice problems, even if you think you don't know much about the topic. Because once you've thought about the question, seen the mark scheme and how they do it, and then you attempt the next question, then you're gonna have a way easier time. Now I have a couple bonus tips that I wanna give you guys. And the first one is a little bit contradictory to what I've said before, which is that in further maths, there are gonna be a couple things that you really do need to just memorize. There's no doubt that your memory of a bunch of random things like any matrices operations or whatever is gonna be built up really well by doing loads of practice questions. But I also recommend making a cheat sheet of the things that you definitely need to know for the exam, just so that you definitely don't forget them. However you like memorizing content works, if you wanna make a flashcard, just anything that's gonna make you actively have to recall that information. Because I don't need to tell you by now that active recall is the most important concept to apply to your revision if you're trying to remember stuff and space repetition. I'll link a video in the description explaining these concepts because people have thousands of videos on them at this point so I won't waste time explaining it in this video. But just make sure that any memorize -y stuff that you have to know are definitely in your head for the exam because those things definitely do exist more in further maths than in single math. Another thing is about your past papers again. When you're sitting them, make sure you're in conditions that are as close as possible to the exam conditions. You don't wanna randomly get scared and uncomfortable when you're sitting a mock or the actual exam. I'll admit that I didn't sit every single past paper that I saw in exam conditions, but I did save some every now and then to time them properly and sit down with no food, just water, a pen and the paper and nothing else and just sit it properly. No music, no YouTube, no distractions, just like the exam. Next up, make sure you find your weaknesses quickly and then hyper-focus on them. Please do not waste time studying content over and over again that you already feel really confident on. I want you to go through the specification, highlight any points or topics that you're not completely comfortable with, and then you're gonna go through them another time and tackle every single one of them by answering tons and tons of practice questions until you are confident. And finally, make sure to redo the past papers that you've already done. I think no matter how many past papers you do, there are pretty much always more past papers that you could be doing just because of how many resources there are online. There are a bunch of teacher made past papers, a bunch of predicted past papers, a bunch of random ones on like mad ass maths that are all color coded depending on how difficult they are. And I really do think it's worth your time to go back and solve Solve some of those past papers again and see how you score after you have a better knowledge of the subject in general. I really don't believe that after a couple weeks you're going to remember every single question on that paper and I know that because if I told you to sit it right now you probably wouldn't get a hundred percent so just give them another go and keep solving those practice questions until the methods are really sticking in your head. But those are pretty much all my tips. If you guys found anything in this video useful make sure to subscribe and like the video. At the end of the day I really do think further maths is a fun subject. It was by far my favorite just because you just solve a bunch of practice questions about stuff that actually gets used every day. It is admittedly a difficult subject but if you're watching this video right now then you have a good amount of time and there's no need to be stressing out. Just make sure you lock in from now. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to this point in the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.